Janssen's metaphyseal dysplasia. There is another name, it is sometimes written as metaphyseal dysplasia, comma, Janssen type. So, they both refer to the same entity, different ways of saying the same thing, right. Some uh, certain countries they write uh, date as 27th August 1984, other countries they write 8 27 1944, doesn't matter, they are the same entities. So, Jensen metaphyseal dysplasia etiology, I told you it involves activating mutations in the PTHR1 gene present on chromosome 3P. This is a G protein coupled receptor which serves as a receptor for both parathyroid hormone as well as parathyroid hormone re receptor related peptide. If you remember, PTHRP is commonly produced by various tumors and it produces hypercalcemia as a pyranuplastic syndrome. So, this receptor can be activated by both of them. Signal through this receptor serves as a break on the differentiation of cartilage cells in bone growth. So, if this critical step does cuper break lag jai, the formation of endochondral ossification will be affected. What due to mutation in PTHR1 gene, what happens is without there being PTH, without there being PTHRP, automatic break will be applied and bone will not grow. So, because these mutations will cause activation of the receptor, gain of negative function mutation, remember, they enhance the breaking effect and thereby slow the bone growth. So, inheritance, this is also autosomal dominant condition. So, what are the clinical features? On one side, I have shown the typical face of these children, they have a very peculiar face. So, they have severe limb shortening, they will have club foot, they will have hypercalcemia. Nelson says that the range of serum calcium commonly ranges between 13 to 15 milligram per deciliter. Normally, serum calcium is 9 to 11. These will have serum calcium 13 to 15. Abnormal facies will be seen as you can see in this picture. The abnormal facies basically involves some degree, mild degree of proptosis. Let me just highlight all these things here. They will have mild proptosis. There will be some of these children, not all. Some of these children will have hypertellurism. They will have hypoplasia of the lower jaw and prominence of the upper jaw as well as maxilla. So, as you can see in this child, I am removing these arrows. So, now you can see clearly, this child is having some forward protrusion of the eyes. There is hypertellurism. The maxilla and the upper jaw, this part will be overly prominent and the part below this, the lower jaw will be hypoplastic. Such kind of appearance, when these children smile, they will have, you know, upper jaw being very prominent. So, they will have these bunny-like teeth coming out. So, that is the typical abnormal face you find in these patients. With age, flexion contractures can develop on the knee and hip and so they can have a stooping for posture as well. Spinal deformities and hearing loss may also be seen. They have a normal intelligence and some of them are actually very bright. So, this is also a group of condition where there is a normal intelligence. X-ray will show why we call it as metaphyseal dysplasia because metaphyseal abnormalities will be seen. You will find features like metaphyseal flaring, irregular mineralization, mottled calcification, the word which is missing from Nelson but very important, fragmentation and widening of the of the growth plate that is the physial plate space and epiphysis are found to be normal in these individuals. Treatment wise you can't do much, treatment is only supportive, there is no specific therapy. If there is hypercalcemia, you need to manage these conditions accordingly.